did the reality of globalization shape the way a Bill Clinton looked at the world and looked at his foreign policy uh, and even his national security options? Again, it, it was, this, again, this remarkable period of optimism. I mean, we all thought the wind was at our back, uh, that we'd reached the end of history. Bill Clinton in 1992, uh, actually one of his little campaign lines was that the cynical calculus of power politics does not compute. It is ill-suited to a new era. So, you know, democracy That's a long was, sentence uh, for yeah, a campaign slogan. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bill, Bill was a voluble guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, all of these good things were supposed to go together. Democracy was going to spread. The rule of law was going to spread. Markets were going to open up. China was going to develop, continue developing. And as it did, it would become more like us. It would become democratic. It would get a middle class. That middle class would want political power. Parties would form. It would become another democracy. And democracies don't fight each other, so that uh, means peace as well. We're all going to get rich in this wonderful world in which power politics is going to be essentially old think. And our only problems are a few pesky dictators in a few not very important countries who haven't gotten the memo yet that mm -hmm. this is all uh, behind us. Um, and that proved, unfortunately, uh, not to be true, obviously, uh, with Russia, but it also proved not to be true with China in a couple of senses. China didn't liberalize in the way many people anticipated that it would. It turned out there were other ways you could be a modern industrial, post-industrial uh, economy that didn't involve necessarily being a democracy. And second, we probably ex uh, accelerated China's entry into, say, the World Trade Organization before it had a legal system at home that would guarantee intellectual property before it was really willing to play by the rules it was signing up for. And again, I think that was based on uh, the Clinton administration's belief that the way to deal with a rising China was to embrace it, bring it into uh, our various institutions, socialize it into how the world actually works, and they'll eventually uh, be welcome, be adopted, will ad follow essentially the same set of standards, and that I think proved to be uh, erroneous as well. The second part of it was, was, of course, that globalization did not deliver uh, at quite as promised. Uh, as you said, it was very good for the Asian uh, lower and middle classes who benefited greatly from this. It was very good for the 1% here in the United States who did very, very well. It was not very good for the lower and middle classes in the United States and in Europe who were adversely affected by it in a number of different ways, and by some things that had nothing to do with globalization, such as uh, increased robotics, automation, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. One final point, uh, we also were creating a global system that was uh, much, less, uh, much more fragile in terms of uh, finance. Uh, as financial markets opened up all over the world and we relaxed controls here, we were setting the stage for the financial crisis of 2008, which had real repercussions in other places, most notably Europe, uh, causing the euro crisis